In this presentation, I'll be talking about grades versus feedback. And this is taken from a fabulous book that I highly recommend called Embedded Formative Assessment, written by Dylan William. And in this book, there are over 50 practical techniques for classroom formative assessment. And this book explores in depth the use of classroom questioning, learning intentions and success criteria, feedback, collaborative and cooperative learning, and self-regulated learning to engineer effective learning environments. This presentation, I'll be looking specifically at chapter five, which in which Dylan talks about providing feedback that moves learning forward. And in it, he talks about the difference between providing grades or scores to students and how that compares to providing grades plus comment or narrative feedback and how that compares to providing only narrative feedback. So there are, two, there are many studies that Dylan looks at in this chapter. In this presentation, I'll only be looking at two of those studies. So Butler in 1988 conducted a study that consisted of 132 sixth grade students in 12 classes in four different schools. And the students spent one work period working on a variety of divergent thinking tasks in which students were asked to identify unusual uses for familiar objects. So the students were given some instruction and then they had a specific series of tasks that they needed to complete. And then after that, their work was collected and looked at by the instructors and by the researchers and different students were given different types of feedback based on which group they were in. And the feedback was given two days later at the beginning of the second work period. So there were three different types of feedback given to the students. Four classes, one in each school. In that situation, the students were given scores or grade only on their work. In four different classes, one different class in each school, students were given comments such as, you thought of quite a few interesting ideas, maybe you could think of more ideas. And then in four different classes, again one in each school, students were given scores plus comments. At the end of the second work period, the work was collected and again evaluated and the purpose was to see if different types of feedback had an impact on improving the student's work during the second work period. So their work was evaluated and the results were as follows. So the students that received scores or grades only when their work was looked at, their work showed no improvement in the second work period. So the feedback that was given, which was just grades, had no impact on improving the student work. The students that were given comments, their work was collected and evaluated, and on average, there was a 30% improvement in the work during the second work period based on the comments given by the instructors. And then finally, this is the most interesting finding, I think, in this study. The students that were given scores and comments actually showed no improvement in their work. So this study, in this study, the data suggests that the only type of feedback that moves learning forward that leads to improved student outcomes or improved work is the feedback that's in the form of providing comments. This is really interesting, I think. And the next study, uh, conducted by Butler in 1987, looks at 200 fifth and sixth grade students in eight different classes. And again, it was set up similar to the other study in that one work period was spent working on a variety of divergent work tasks. The work was collected. The students were given feedback at the beginning of the second work period, the, that work was collected and then the, the and evaluated and they looked at 
what type of feedback improved the student work. So in this situation, there were actually four different types of feedback given to the students. So two classes of students were given comments, just as in the first one, which the example was, you found a quite a few interesting items, perhaps you can find a few more. Another two different groups of classes, the students were given grades only. And then in two different classes, students were ge given written praise, such as nice job, great job. And then finally, two different classes, the students were given no feedback at all. So again, after the second work period, their work was collected. They, the students got the, this type of feedback at the beginning of the second work period. The students worked, and then at the end of the second work period, their work was collected to see if any impact, if the feedback given to the students had any impact on their work. So when they looked at the students' work that where the students were just given comments, they, that work showed an ins, a substantial improvement. The students that were given grades only, their work showed no improvements. The students that were given written praise, such as great job, also showed no improvement. And not that surprisingly, the students that were given no feedback at all also showed no improvement. So this research suggests that, again, the type of feedback that is most helpful to helping students improve their work is giving comments only. And I find these two studies, which I'm highlighting here just because they're they're um, great examples of some of the other research presented in the chapter. These studies suggest that the best type of feedback that moves student learning forward is giving comments. Not giving comments and grades, which I was actually surprised to find, but just giving comments. And so this is really interesting, and I think if you take it seriously and think about how it might impact your classroom and your teaching, it could have some huge implications. So I really encourage you, if this kind of uh, was interesting to you, if you want to learn more, I encourage you to read this book, to check it out from the library or, or purchase it. And just this one chapter alone on providing feedback that moves student learning forward, just this chapter alone is worth the cost of the book, in my mind. If what this research suggests is true, and if it's taken seriously and applied to your classroom, it could have huge implications for student learning and for your teaching. And so I provide this to you as food for thought as we move forward and move towards the end of the semester.